Hey kiddos, today we're going to talk about kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic molecular theory um, is often abbreviated as KMT. Um, so you'll hear that a lot when you hear KMT. What you want to think about is kinetic molecular theory. And it essentially means kind of what you would think it means. If you remember from maybe your elementary or middle school classes and you talked about kinetic energy, which is going to be a big part of what we're going to talk about here. Um, kinetic meant energy of motion, right? And so when we are talking about kinetic molecular theory, what we're essentially saying is that the molecules, or really more to the point, the particles that make up matter are in motion, okay, and that they're moving around. And that motion has everything to do with energy, and we will see, we're going to tie in in the next couple of videos, that energy has everything to do with temperature, and that gives us a way to measure the energy of things. And so when you think kinetic molecular energy, when you think of KMT, what you should always think about is particles in motion, okay? So particles in motion. I say particles in particular as opposed to the molecules of molecular part is because we can have cases where we have single atoms that are doing the same thing. And so if we're talking about a gas, and we're talking about something like helium, helium exists as lone atoms that are moving around. So I think particles is a sort of more encompassing definition. Um, but it's kinetic molecular theory. And most of the time what we're going to talk about are molecules of those things. So a quick refresher to what we talked about earlier um, in, in a previous video is that we've got solids where the particles are moving but only moving a really small amount and they essentially they're going to have things like Brownian motion and stuff like that where they're they're sort of just vibrating in place. They're not really they're not really going anywhere. They're locked into their crystalline pattern typically. Um, but they're, they're still moving a little bit. If, if all of the molecular motion stops, then we would be at absolute zero. That's kind of what absolute zero means, is that all of the molecular motion is stopped. It's a zero entropy state and some stuff that we're not really concerned about right now. But particles stop moving, um, then we would be at absolute zero. So that means for solids, they're still moving, but just sort of moving in place. For liquids, obviously liquids and gases together we would call fluids, and they're called fluids because the particles can sort of move around each other. They are fluid. They can move, they can flow around each other. And so in liquids, the particles are still fairly tightly packed together in solids, usually a little bit less dense than a solid, except in the case of water. Um, but, but in general, that means that there's a little bit more range of mobility there. They can get around each other a little bit. So in the case of gases, and gases are usually where we're going to apply KMT to, um, gases, the particles are really far apart, they're moving quickly, all of those types of things. And so typically when we refer to things in KMT, we're going to refer specifically to gases. Now all of the things that we're going to talk about, um, the points and all that stuff, they apply to a lesser degree to liquids and solids as well because we're going to again assume that things are in motion, that they're moving that our molecules are moving, and that's the theory, that's our model for how these things are going to behave. And that's going to influence a lot of things. Um, there's a whole branch of chemistry called kinetics. It's about mechanisms and how fast the reactions happen. Um, there's going to be um, things like collision theory, that, that how do reactions actually happen? Well, there have to be enough energy, and the particles have to be in motion to make that happen. And so the movement here is going to be really important. So what we're going to talk about now are what are the points of kinetic theory? Like this, so there's a kinetic molecular theory. What essentially are the basic principles of that? And we're going to go through those really quickly. All right, so point one of kinetic molecular theory is that we're going to treat the particles, treat the molecules, treat the atoms as though they were composed of small hard spheres. Um, and traditionally, the way that we would talk about this is we would refer to this sort of like that they were like billiard balls, okay? That they're these really tiny small particles, and when we draw them and visualize them, we're usually going to picture them, especially for KMT purposes, as though they were just little spheres that were running, going all over the place, bouncing into each other and all of those things. And so sometimes you'll refer to this as the billiard ball model. Um, now, obviously, are the atoms and molecules that we're talking about, are they really small hard spheres? Well, most molecules obviously aren't. They have shapes that we'll talk about in another part of the year. Um, so they're not just little spherical, and they're not really necessarily hard either. Um, except in the case that they have electrostatic attractions and repulsions, and so some of that is going to affect um, sort of how hard they are. What this means for us, though, is that we're just for simplicity's sake and the sake of our model, we're going to act as though they are these small hard spheres, and that's going to lead us into some other points of KMT. So point one, we're going to act as though they're small hard spheres. All right, so points two and three of KMT 
Um, and, and again, remember the KMT applies specifically to gases. We're going to apply it to a lesser degree to liquids and solids. But point two, gas particles are in constant random motion. If you have a container of gas particles or gas molecules or atoms or whatever, they are moving around all over the place. They tend to have a lot of kinetic energy, and we'll see in our next video that relates directly to the energy that they have. Um, or that's what's going to give them the speed that they have is how much, how much energy they have, which will relate to temperature and all those things. So they're constantly moving around that there's no predefined pattern to their motion, that they're sort of moving around, and when they hit something, they're going to bounce off of it. That something, by the way, that they could hit could be the sides of the container, or they could run into each other, um, which leads us directly into point three, which is that when they do run into the sides of the container, when they run into each other, that those collisions that they have with each other are much like billiard ball collisions in that they are essentially elastic. And elastic, in this sense, doesn't mean stretchy, what elastic means in this sense is that there's no net energy loss, that the system as a whole doesn't lose any energy. And this is, if, you, if you've ever played uh, pool or billiards, when you hit the balls and one of the ball hits the others, essentially this ball could hit this one, transfer all of its energy to this ball. And so that means that essentially there's not a lot of energy loss, that the energy that this ball had and then it stopped was transferred into this one as it then moved. Okay, and so that's essentially what we're saying here is true also for KMT, is that the collisions are elastic, that energy might be lost by an individual particle, but it's then gained by another particle, or perhaps even maybe some of that energy went into maybe sides of the container or something like that. But essentially, there's no net energy loss. Now, we know from a real-world physics perspective that that's not entirely true, right? And one of the things about KMT that we'll see is that these are all, this is a model, right? So these are all approximations that we're going to use to explain things. But in reality, okay, energy is always lost, right? Just like on a billiard ball table, you can, you can if you hit the balls and they're transferring their energy from one another, they're eventually going to slow down due to friction. And of course, molecules, um, and so of course what that really means is that there is, there, there's no free lunch, kiddos, that energy always um, goes somewhere, Right? But we know that for the universe as a whole, that energy is conserved. That's the law of conservation of energy. Okay? And so collisions are elastic. There's no energy loss. That if one particle hits another, it's going to transfer its energy or they're bounce off of each other. And the sum of their energies is all going to be the same. So point four is that there's no attraction or repulsion between the particles. And what that means is, again, think about our billiard balls. Okay? And so these billiard balls, obviously, they're moving around and they can run into each other. But when they, run, when they hit each other, they don't stick to each other. And if two billiard balls are sitting next to each other, it's not like one of them is repelling the other one. They're not like magnets or anything and something's going to push them apart. And so we're going to treat our particles in KMT as though there's no attraction or repulsion between them. Now, what should have popped up in your head pretty much immediately is... Hey, Mr. Arnold, I thought, though, that, like, I mean, atoms have positive and negative charges, and there's an electron cloud out there, and that's got negative charges. And so, is it in reality there's some attraction or repulsion between them? And the answer is yes. Again, this is a model where we're simplifying things so that we can figure things out. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that under normal circumstances, like normal room temperature or a normal day in the lab or something, that this essentially is true. There's no real attraction or repulsion between those particles. We'll see later when we do bonding. We talk about polarity and those sorts of things. That yes, actually, there is some attraction or repulsion given certain scenarios. But the vast bulk of the time, KMT is true. Um, our model holds true, and there's no real attraction or repulsion between them. The billiard balls, if they're sitting next to each other, they're not pushing each other apart. They're not attracted to one another. They're just there. And the same is going to be true of our particles, particularly of a gas as well. So that leads us into our last point, which is point five. We're going to need to talk a little bit about energy there, and I'm going to draw another diagram for you and try to explain what's going on in that. All right, so on to point five. I've obviously got a really complicated-looking sort of deal up there, so let's talk about that. So point five is the temperature um, of the molecules, or temperature of a sample, is a measure of the average kinetic energy of those molecules. Okay, that's what temperature is. Temperature isn't really measuring the amount of heat in something. Temperature, essentially, what it's doing for us is measuring how quickly are those particles moving. And essentially, it's a, a measure of the average of that. It doesn't mean that every particle in that bunch is moving at the same speed. In fact, they're most definitely not. But it's a measure of that average. And so this little diagram here is called a Boltzmann distribution. Okay. Um, and what a Boltzmann distribution shows us, and you'll use these a lot if you take some higher level science classes, but essentially what matters for us in Chem 1 
is that a Boltzmann distribution shows us on the y-axis here is the fraction of the particles. In other words, how many of the particles in that sample. On the x-axis, we've got speed. And, and what I've done here is labeled each of them with a different color. And so we've got one, say, at zero degrees, and one at 100, and one at 500. And really, these would look a little bit different if they were actually at these temperatures. But for, for our purposes' sake, these are fine. And so what you can see here is that so the speed of the molecules is zero degrees. The bulk of them, if we were to like draw a line and say, hey, where's the most of the molecules at? It would be about here. And so most of the molecules were moving at about that speed. And then if we went to the 100 degrees, we would say that a lot of the molecules, okay, in this general vicinity here, um, are moving at a much higher speed. And then if we went to the pink, and really I should have drawn that pink out a little bit more, probably should have drawn it a little bit more like that, okay. If we'd have drawn that there, we would have had a much higher speed. And what that means is that at zero degrees, the average molecules are moving much slower than the average molecules are at 100 degrees. Remember that the temperature is measuring the kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, if you remember that formula. And so the speed plays a really big role in that kinetic energy. So at a higher temperature, okay, the pink here, those particles have a lot more energy, and so your average particle in that mix is gonna have a lot more speed, a lot more energy, which would stand to reason, okay? That makes pretty good sense. What's kind of curious when you look at a Boltzmann distribution, though, is that if we even look at zero degrees, there are going to be some molecules, okay, some outliers, that have a really high speed, that are higher than the speed maybe of, of the average molecule at 500 degrees Celsius. So there's some outliers there, but the bulk of those molecules fall in here. Most of them are moving at this speed. Most of the pink ones are moving at this speed. The other curious thing that comes out of this for us in terms of, K, of KMT and kinetic molecular theory is that what this means is that if temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, then at a given temperature, okay, molecules of any gas all have the same kinetic energy. Okay, that if temperature essentially is proportional to that, okay, which it is, um, then if we're talking about hydrogen gas and helium gas and they're at the same temperature, it means that they all have the same kinetic energy. Kinetic energy we can essentially equate to that measurement of temperature, or at least say that they're proportional to each other. What that means is that if a molecule is bigger, okay, so like helium has an atomic mass, helium has a mass of four, and hydrogen has a mass of two. Remember, hydrogen is H2, right? Um, that, what that means then, if, if we plug these in, is that since helium is twice as heavy as hydrogen, if they're going to have the same energy, then that means that the helium particles have to be moving more slowly than the hydrogen ones. Hydrogen, since it has a smaller mass, is going to have a higher velocity because they both have the same kinetic energy at a given temperature. Um, and that has some enormous implications when we get on further on into some more complicated stuff. Okay, so this is a Boltzmann distribution. You've got five points of kinetic molecular theory. And what you really want to think about, okay, there are two big takeaways from this lesson, is that molecules are constantly moving around and that our predominant theory, KMT, is that we're going to treat those molecules essentially as if they're billiard balls, okay? They're moving all around. They're small, hard spheres that they run into each other, but that energy is conserved and given to each other as that happens. Um, and that there's no attraction or repulsion between them, okay? And then, of course, that slightly more complicated 0.5, but it's really not that complicated. It means that temperature shows us essentially some proportional constant of what average kinetic energy is, how fast are the particles moving, okay? So that's KMT in a nutshell. So that's KMT in a nutshell. In the next video, we're going to specifically talk a little bit more about the energy and what that specifically has to do um, with all this phase change stuff um, that we mentioned a little bit before. All right? Thanks, kiddos.